Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk to you about Bernoulli first order differential equations. When we have a first order equation and it's not linear and it's not separable, which are the easiest methods to use for first order equations generally, then the plan B we usually resort to is some type of a substitution method. We've gone over an additional substitution method in our other videos about homogeneous first order equations. So our other substitution method here for first order equations is when we have what's called a Bernoulli equation. We're going to go over those in our video here. If we can take our equation and write it in this form, dy dx plus some function of x times y, equals some function of x times y to some power, then we call that a Bernoulli first order equation. And the substitution that we make for this is actually v equals y to the 1 minus n. Now if you look back at our dy dx plus f of x times y equals g of x and you just stopped there, then this would actually be a linear equation, right? So this almost looks linear. In other words, if the power of y here was zero, then this would actually be a linear equation. So we're going to assume when we're talking about this as a Bernoulli equation instead of a linear equation, we're talking about the power of y is not zero on the right hand side. We'll also just throw in there that if n is 1, then this is actually a separable equation. But assuming that n is not 0 and it's not 1, then this is a Bernoulli equation. Our substitution v equals y to the 1 minus n is actually going to turn this into a linear equation. So then we'll have to know how to use something like an integrating factor to solve this the rest of the way once we make it linear. So if you've already watched our video on homogeneous first order equations, for a homogeneous equation, the substitution makes the equation separable. For a Bernoulli equation, this substitution makes this equation linear. Now before you start working with your Bernoulli equation, just like linear equations have a normal form, we want to think of this as the normal form for our Bernoulli equation. So if it's not in this form, we want to go ahead and rearrange it into this form before we start working with it. We're going to go ahead and work one example in this video. Coming up in our series we also have an examples video where you can see a few of these worked. But we're going to go ahead and work one. Now if you've already seen a text or a different video, they may start a bit different stepwise than we do. In our videos we're going to always go ahead and start by initially dividing by whatever power of y we have on the right hand side here if it's in its normal form. So in this example we're going to divide by y squared. So if we do that then we end up with 1 over y squared dy dx minus, now think about this is really 1 over x times y, so we have still 1 over x, but now dividing y by y squared we get 1 over y is equal to now just x on the right hand side. So I've essentially just gotten a function of x now on the right hand side. You'll always be able to see your substitution right next to your function of x here. So this expression here is going to be your substitution for v. So we're going to say v is equal to 1 over y, or in other words, y to the minus 1. Okay, so that will give us a substitution for this 1 over y. We're going to need to sub out dy dx because if we're replacing y's with v's, I'm going to actually need a dv dx term for my equation here to make this linear. So if v is 1 over y or y to the minus 1, then taking the derivative of this, right, so in other words dv dx is actually going to equal, think of power rule here, negative 1 y to the minus 2, or negative 1 over y squared. Now y is a function of x, so remember the chain rule gives us times dy dx when we're doing this dv dx here. Now we just need to look over here in the front and see what we actually have. We have a positive 1 over y squared dy dx. So what we'll actually need to do for our substitution will actually be subbing in negative dv dx because that is actually positive 1 over y squared dy dx, and that's what we have in the front. So we'll go ahead and say then negative dv dx minus 1 over x, and remember this was our v, our original thing we chose for v, is equal to x. This is linear, now it's not in the normal form because I have a negative out front, right? So if I want to put this in the normal form, then I need to multiply the equation by negative 1, and we'll say dv dx plus 1 over x times v is equal to negative x. Now this is linear in terms of v and x instead of y and x. So we'll just make a note here, this is linear. 
And now let's find our integrating factor if this is linear, right? So the integrating factor will be e to the integral of this function of x here, 1 over x, dx. And the integral of 1 over x dx is going to be ln x. So we get e to the ln x, also known as x. Okay, so we're going to remember with integrating factor, we multiply the entire equation by the integrating factor. So that'll be x times dv dx plus 1 over x v equals negative x. And in our linear videos, what we do is we don't actually distribute the left-hand side because we know the shortcut for linear equations is that this left-hand side becomes a product rule of v times the integrating factor. I will go ahead and multiply out on the right side, so we'll say negative x squared over there. And when I take the antiderivative with respect to x on both sides, remember I said this is a product rule of v and the integrating factor. So this just becomes v times x over here. I will need to actually do the integral over here, so negative integral x squared dx, but that's not so bad, right? Let's go ahead and move up here. So we'll get v times x is equal to negative one-third x cubed, just a power rule there, right, for our integral, plus c, constant of integration. And now we'll go ahead and divide both sides by x. So we'll get negative one-third. This becomes x squared when we divide by x. And this becomes c over x. Now, remember what our substitution was. So what I want to do is actually solve for my original y. Let's go ahead and replace our v with 1 over y. And that equals negative 1 third x squared plus c over x. And if it's important to you, you could go ahead and get a common denominator and solve. We'll go ahead and show you that process here. So you could either leave it this way implicitly, or you could go ahead and, because this is two separate fractions really here, we could say 1 over y is equal to negative, if I multiply the top and the bottom by x here to get a common denominator, I'd get x cubed over 3x. Here I'd need to multiply by 3 on the top and the bottom. Now technically I guess 3 times c would just be some c, right? But we'd get 3x on the bottom. The reason we do that is so that everything then becomes one fraction, right? So everything is over 3x. I'll turn this around so my minus is in between the terms. So constant minus x cubed. And now this times this equals this times this. Or because everything's one fraction, we could actually just solve by reciprocal. So here we get y is equal to 3x over our constant minus x cubed. So just be careful. We don't want to take two separate fractions and say 1 over y is this and flip each individual fraction over. That's not actually true algebraically. So if you want to solve explicitly for y, then make sure you get a common denominator if you have separate terms here, and then deal with it that way. Okay, our summary of how to solve a Bernoulli equation the way we do it. So first thing, we divided our equation by y to whatever power was on the right side. It gave us something that looked like this. So we had y to the negative n in front of our dy dx term. We had our substitution for v right here in the equation next to our function of x. We just had a function of x then left on the right side. We used the substitution v equals whatever we had right here for our y to the 1 minus n. And then we needed to find a substitution for this thing. We get it in terms of dv dx, and then we have this new equation, dv dx plus some function of x times v equals some other function of x. Remember to get this in the normal form before you start working with it as a linear equation and getting the integrating factor. Okay, everybody, we've got some Bernoulli equation examples coming up in our next video in the series. Check that out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.